two types of data engineers and uh, yeah, maybe someone thinks there is just one type, just data engineers. Yeah, for, it depends on your background. So I just want to go a bit about the background. So different people and like they share the same goal. Okay. Yeah, and this is outline slide about myself. And basically I will talk about two use cases and similar use cases, but there is like two different engineers doing the same work and helping the business to get some, some other stuff. And then in the end, I want to review some kind of like different architecture and trying to scale them from like gentle to hardcore. Yeah, this is a slide about myself. So I'm I'm over 13 years uh, working as a data engineering, data warehouse. Yeah, I'm originally I'm from Russia. I moved from Canada eight years ago. And I used to do some writing. So in the bottom, you can see the books I, I wrote. Yeah, it, the first book for Snowflake. Then before it was so popular, I started to write them. I also did some consulting work with uh, Rocky Data Consulting Company. I was like, probably one of the first partner of Snowflake. And after some time, especially in pandemic hit, I realized the consulting is not for me because I'm not the salesperson. I'm more like just engineer who likes to build things. And I really like to share the knowledge. And I used to run, it's still active in my home country. Uh, the data learner is like free educational things that I can help people to get the job, like either data engineer or BI, and like create the YouTube videos. And it's like the whole uh, course how to be like individual contributor and recently I decided okay I need to translate all my stuff in in English I, I decided to start okay I I want to do something in English like globally and it is uh, I find the name Surfalytics because I'm, I'm based on the west coast and here we have the cold pacific ocean but it still people can still do the surfing so I was thinking, okay I like the surfing I, I like analytics I asked chat GPT what can you give me for the, the company name or like for the for the things I'm going to do? And he's oh, you can use Surfalytics, yeah, why not? And then I took this like uh, font from Supreme brand, from skateboard and like now it is what it is. I also do some teaching in local British Columbia University where I'm teaching mostly um, cloud computer computing fundamentals for like three years. Yeah, and now I can move forward. Uh, yeah, hardcore and gentle data. If, if you don't know what I mean, let me try to explain you. So for me, because you can solve, the, you know, like an in information technology, like in tech, you can solve one problem with many, many different like ways. And there is no better good way, just like well, what you choose and how it, you're going to work and scalable and so on. So for me, I define that hardcore engineer, it's usually the people who has background in computer science and they, they used to work as software development engineers. They, they wrote lots of code and then somehow they start, okay, they, they shift to, to the data space. And the gentle engineers is like a different set of the people who actually don't have any special degree in like computer science and they never did like the proper coding courses. They just, they just been in the data space somehow like, like myself and they start doing, doing different things, what is possible. And they have, like, they have some other advantages and disadvantages. But over the time, like, everyone can progress and like learn the things, pick up, and so many different online schools. Like, if you want coding, okay, you go and learn coding. And right now, probably you you will go to learn like Python language, and uh, you can be pretty like in good spot if you know the Python good and you can you can code. But yeah, I want I want to talk about like this every specific. Um, role and also I want to highlight that it doesn't matter do you have what kind of background you have or not because yeah I'm doing this kind of teaching coaching people like since 2010 so I, I know how how to help people get get the offer and and I do this for free most of the time because I, I feel the more you spend like energy and helping people then like you get more energy from the universe yeah let's go yeah two use cases assuming there are like Anna and she's running online business and she's running on premise, uh, hunting and fishing. Why not? And uh, there is John. He is creating mobile apps like in other kind of business, and he is running on the public clouds. And both of them are running the business. Business pretty successful, but as you know, the goal of analytics like it's uh, it's like 
multiple goals actually, right? You you can either increase the revenue or decrease the cost or mitigate the risk, explore new market and, and so on and so on. So th th they both have the same, the same goals. As the business owners, they want to measure their business. They want to know, okay, if it's like any kind of spike. So this Christmas, New Year's Eve, so there's probably the spike and we need like more, more demand of the goods and so on. And they also want to find any bottlenecks and areas of improvements. And of course, they care about the customer experience. Yeah, obviously, we're all in like a data event. And and answer is obvious. You need the data to answer all those questions. But also, you, you need to build some kind of like infrastructure where you can collect the data, consolidate the data, and then look to the data and find some insights. So this is my favorite slide about what is analytics. It's not my idea. It's a, I grabbed this idea from the books, and I think the book is the best source of the knowledge. So, and in this particular book, the author mentioned there is, okay, what is analytics we just covered? Like it's increased revenue, decreased cost, mitigates risk, like new markets, holiday hypothesis. That, that's basically it. Like every business, if it's business for profit, it cares about revenue. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Um, you can increase the revenue by decreasing the cost, or maybe you want to improve customer experience and so on. So I, I want to briefly touch this, it calls analytics value chain. So if you look why every organization exists, uh, they exist to generate the value. And the value could be different uh, for different kinds of people. There's like employees, there is customers, uh, shareholders, everyone wants different things. So right? the customers, they want really good products, or good services, maybe personalization. And the shareholders, they, they care about the money. And okay, if you want that organization exists and continue to grow, you need to generate more value. I mean, by you, organization needs to generate more value. How they can do this? Of course, they need to do the proper, like the right accurate decision making progress. How we can make decisions? Right, we need the data. We need the data to do effective uh, decision making progress. That, that's why all those people who work with data is valuable so they they know where you can find the data how to clean consolidate and then maybe build some self service dashboards so maybe some insights so like it's real real time data feeds or maybe the batch and so on and so on. but the idea you need the data and i i think everyone aware about this and yeah this is just briefly touch point about my perception of analytics and why especially organization like uh, I need this kind of thing. So how we can reach those goals? You remember, like, John and Anna, they both have the goals, right? They want to scale the business. And they have some questions, uh, some sim simple questions that they need to answer. So if we look at this from an analytics perspective, there are, like, a couple of things. You need data stack, right? Um, <laughs> I don't think it's good to use... Nowadays, modern data stack, the word. So it's like kind of like bad words right now, but just the data stack, data infrastructure where you can set up your storage, uh, your pipelines to ingest the data and some BI tools. Of course, you need the data team. Yeah, and uh, it depends on the size of the company. It could be just one person who can do everything or it's like, it could be the team of 30 people. Uh, you need the budget. And uh, because those people, they, they're quite expensive. And um, you need some data. And also, of course, you need hypothesis. Yeah, usually the product manager, the person who will generate hypothesis. But it really depends who actually will generate hypothesis because, because I used to work in Amazon and uh, one of the key um, area of responsibility for BI engineer was not actually building the dashboards, but generate recommendation for the business. So actually deliver them insights. Yeah, it's... It, it depends who who will provide insights and hypotheses and uh, affect the business decisions. So let's look to the data stack. And this, like there are like five layers. So those five layers, I think they, they here since like 90s. Uh, nothing really changed except we, we put the storage from on premise to the cloud and there is more tools well, lots of tools and especially like the area of data science and machine learning and right now like only lazy company not doing generative AI. So, but the thing is the rest of the layers. And if we look to who responsible for different layers, then we can clo come closer to the different roles. So the data engineer 
is responsible for data processing and the storage. So data engineer need to figure, okay, where I want to store the data? Is it data lake? Is it lake house or data lake, delta lake? So, so many different things, the data warehouse. And how you want to put the data? Do you want to use the batch and streaming? And um, data science team, they usually depends. Like they can just grab their own label data and do their insights. They can enrich the products or they can do some kind of internal use cases. But they usually they comfortable to connect to the storage layer and extract the data and run their machine learning stuff. And there is the business layer. They're usually like different analysts and business intelligence uh, developers, engineers sits, and they use they use the data from the consolidated storage to to build the dashboards, to help the business to look to the data and make decisions. And it, it's quite well works right now. Then there is not the manager for the team, like always could be manager for analytics team or the manager for engineering team, but there's actually product managers. And because the product manager really close to the business and they're like the small teams, the product managers, they can be very efficient. They can look to the, to the business problem, come to the top with the team and prototype something and build, build the solution. But it's, it's like, depends. So there are lots of um, descriptions what actually data engineering means. Like every company has like, all one description. Um, in short, data for me and data engineering makes that useful, accessible for consumers by building secure, scalable data infrastructure. So yeah, the first step is the built infrastructure. And of course you need to care that it's scalable, secure because the data usually is one of the key assets of the company. So you probably heard a lot of stories for the data breach and how it affect the, the companies and the customers and loyalty and so on. That's why you should be really careful where you put the data and how you protect, protect it. So, so we will, in this particular presentation, we will just talk about two use cases. Anne and John, they're going to hire a data engineer. They're going to hire a data engineer to establish some kind of like foundational uh, architecture for the data stack and they will think about okay what tools we need for data ingestion and what tools we need for consolidation and here like you you can insert any kind of vendor on the market so by the end of the day it doesn't matter so yeah both of them they, they need data engineers and um uh, yeah, they basically because they they the idea was here that they need not a data engineer, they, they need modern day like just a data stack and to consolidate the data and answer the business questions. So and they they know that if they hire data engineers, they, they probably know the answer. And I put here the um, comics with the wheels because very often the, um, you can hire the people and they can start just invent invent the bicycle or like invent the wheels. They have their own opinion how the things should run, even if they run wrongly. So it just, it just, it just work. So, but okay, let's, um, yeah. The GIF not works here. So it should be like, this guy's running, <laughs> move fast and break things. And then it, it's fell down in the end. And I can explain what, what is one of the biggest challenge uh, in the industry right now. It's every year it's just worse. And I think generative AI and chat GPT and like people writing the blogs and uh, their marketing pitches, it's, it's just progressing even worse. Yeah, I really like uh, this slide. It's 2021, we, no, I think the slide is 2023. I just didn't change the, um, the header. So it's data and AI landscape that's very popular uh, coming from FirstMark. And every year they trying like to put more and more different tools, trying to bucket them by different categories, all of them somehow related to the data. So the challenge is assuming the is a business owner decide, okay, I need to do some kind of analytics, what I need to use. Or there is the new person who is starting career path in data. Okay, what should I do? Like, and you can take any when random vendor from the this list, and they all will claim that they can do anything for you. If, and you know how, how it works, like the, the sales team the will, will sell the features and then engineering team should come up with like solution. 
solution. I mean, like it's the back end of the product. But the idea here, there is so much diff different kind of informations uh, here in the internet that it's really, it's extremely hard to know what exactly you need. And, but if you just look deeper in this, you actually, many of them works very similar way. And yeah, it's it just the, the huge challenge in the industry. That's why I'm, it, it's quite scary to start career in the data space right now, but it will be even worse. So for me, I feel like more confident because I used to work in the time, like even in 2000, uh, into, in zeros. And then we have like couple products for data warehouse, couple products for BIs and couple for ETLs. That's it. Like total maybe like 10 products on the whole market. And yeah. And then we started like see the growing and especially the cloud computing contribute a lot on this. Now everyone can build their own product, make it open source or put in cloud marketplace. So and before we just talk about, okay, the different data engineers, they, their perspective, now we can talk more closer about the two types of data engineers. So let's look first on the background of uh, our founders. Anna has computer degree and she, she doesn't have lots of money and the budget. And she really prefer like coding things and really trust in open source. Versus John is different. He, he just finished MBA, he had funds from father-in-law and he he really comfortable to use different kinds of uh, no code low code things and really like clicking around and like it just works so their goals now okay they want to hire a data engineer they want to consolidate all the data in the single storage uh, they they want to maybe some lightweight data science things and build some dashboards in bi and hopefully there is the security and compliance in place and data quality checks and of course like documentations and DevOps. So let, let me introduce two new like two new hires. Anna hired Jessica. Jessica was a software engineer, worked in Java, Go. She did coding and built backend services. So she, she's really proficient in SDE. And in her resume, you can find those like different different tools that she's very comfortable to work. So she, she can take different kinds of open source tools, connect them together and make them work. Or even if like lots of data, she is able to, to write MapReduce job using the Java. And uh, John found Leo. So Leo he has the Starbucks cup. He's really obsessed with Starbucks. Um, but he was like just data analyst and he supports like the business, look into the data, maybe it works a lot with spreadsheets and that's not enough spreadsheets. He used like different popular tools like Tableau, Looker. Yeah, the Cicoda. Yeah, Cicoda is probably quite good. That's why he chose Cicoda. Uh, data Robot, Fivetran, DBT, Snowflake, all that stuff. So you see this is, this is quite like opposite things and they have different understanding of the, how the universe works. Yeah, let's let's look what Jessica architecture look like. So okay, for data processing, she decided okay, I need some kind of like cron simple, maybe not so simple, but cron orchestrator that Airflow can do the work. And why not to leverage the streaming if she knows how to do this, and she can use really like scalable analytics, uh, open source uh, database, ClickHouse, and maybe put some of the stuff like some big data, the logs, whatever, in Hadoop and run MapReduce jobs. Yeah, and for visualization layer, she said, okay, I can go with like Apache superset, it's open source, it's have nice visualizations, it supports Python and Plotly for building some custom custom apps, for example, for, for sales, sales team. So, and this project is quite complicated, but for some of you, maybe it's quite quite easy one, right? Um, and Leo, with Starbucks Cup has the different opinion. Okay, wh why should I like complicate it my life? Life because I have some other stuff to do. L let's just go with Snowflakes. I heard like Snowflake is good. It's powerful. It's uh, data warehouse is a service. It can it can handle everything. So DBT is quite popular in the industry. Or yeah, I can use DBT for modeling the data. Yeah, the five tran. Yeah, I have some some sources like different marketing source, whatever. I can just input my credentials uh, and ingest all the data in case if I will be really like push, I can use streaming with Snowpipe and just stream data right into Snowflake. 
and I think a new release of dynamic tab tables and like some connection to the Kafka, it's, it would be even, even easier to do. So for science experimentation, there are options like Alteryx, Data Robot, there's probably many other things that can work. And for visualization, yeah, there's like proven tools, Tableau, Looker, and some people I know really like the Power BI. But this is from Microsoft World. Yeah, just a reminder for the Leo that Excel is not database. Uh, I know it's it, it's happened often, and I think in other things happen often. After all of those things, there, are, there is could be another Leo who actually will dump all the data from I don't know Alteryx, Tableau, and Looker back into spreadsheet and do some kind of analysis. Yeah, let's let's trying to to measure from on the scale from one to five. On different aspects of their data solution. Without going in details, how, like, is it nice code, not nice code? What's about like CI CD process, code reviews, and how it's gonna scale over the time, and, and especially the cost of the solution. So, the time to market, yeah, Leo can, can do it pretty fast. But some, I discussed this, this uh, with some SDs. So, they told me they actually can do it pretty fast. So, they, they can use a bunch of different open source tools, connect them together in their local notebook and done, it, it's working. Yeah, I don't know, maybe it's true. But in my world, it's actually, if you want to put in production those kinds of systems, it's, it's not so easy. So maintenance, yeah, here, okay, it, it depends how good the quality of the open source solution, how you design it and release. Yeah, probably the time to market would be even, even worse if maintenance will be very good, but maintenance will, will be very good. So if, usually with the vendors, the maintenance is good. Yeah, but if something doesn't work, anyway, you, you couldn't fix it. it. It's just not working. If Snowflake is not working, it's, it's the service. You just can, can wait while they, they fix backend. But they all have SLA, and you can also request refund. So CI, CD, yeah, she, she, Jessica is um, SD. She definitely knows how to do this. But Leo probably need to use... In the past, you can use Google. Now he can use ChatGPT to understand what a CI CD even like learn how to do these things. Yeah. And actually, uh, the, the website I recently built, like surfalytics.com, I have no idea how to uh, build the websites using Jekyll and uh, how I can host and GitHub Actions. The ChatGPT give, gave me instructions how to create the website and how I can host it in GitHub Actions. So it actually works pretty well. Um, DevProt environments, yeah, the Leo not really care about DevProt. It's like, why you need the Dev if you have the Prot? But yeah, SD, they, they care. Yeah, of course, this is the risky situation. Like those, this is kind of like could affect the business and maybe it works in short term, but not in long term. And I think you understand that in some cases, I'm just kidding about different aspects. Yeah, um, time to onboard new employees. Yeah, then you have lots of open source, lots of code. It might take some time to onboard, and especially if they're assuming Jessica leaves the company, it would be could be really hard to to get anyone. So if they all leave the company, we can find someone else who who able to work with Tableau and Snowflake and quickly pick up where it dropped. So easy to replace, yeah, like it could be quite hard. But honestly, like we don't have any people that not replaceable. Uh, Steve Jobs was fired one so and I think they probably found someone to replace him but then he they asked him to come back but we have many stories of the recent layoffs like even very talented successful engineers like from like fun companies they just let go that's why yeah everyone could be replaced easy to scale it depends yeah for, for me the the managed services they easier to scale but again, it depends on your team. So probably what Leo did alone, like the JSC need another like three, four engineers to, to do this. Um, is Leo happy? Yeah, by the end of the day, they all work for the business. They're like complementary to the business. They, they're part of the business. Their goal to solve those problems, if the business ask about insights and the data does it, whatever. So, and they both deliver, they both answer the questions, sufficient, sufficient result and decisions uh, the help to make decisions that boost the performance of the business. They both did the brain and job. They just did it differently. So, and um, 
if we look forward, like where they can move, like in terms of uh, their skills development, because they both started like in small company and now they have the choice, like, and probably for many people, the choice, okay, that we want to work uh, fun companies because they have the biggest, the biggest salary. Yeah. And, and maybe this is the option for them, but what else? Let, let's look at Leo. What option he has? Yeah, of course, he, he can start to, to pick up in the hard skills because understanding how the CI CD works, how like DevOps works, uh, how the coding, all those things. And if you can adding those components into his solution, uh, it is absolutely terrific. And um, maybe if, he, if he's not interesting to go into like coding things and uh, individual contributor role, he can switch to the people manager or the product manager, or he can just start his own company. This, uh, and the Jessica there, she can also start the company, he can move to the people product manager role, or she can get some domain knowledge because I, I probably missed to mention one of the distinction between them. So assuming the Jessica is like, she's really good in coding and everything, but she has less uh, business domain. She was like, okay, I can, I like to work in backend systems. I can do solve different kinds of problems, but I'm not really deep in the in the business domain, how the business work. Versus Leo, like not not very good in coding, in coding, but he has like business background. He likes to understand how the business works and how he's trying to better understand. He really often communicates back and forth with the business stakeholders, so trying to understand their requirements and then maybe using spreadsheet, maybe I don't Snowflake, Excel, a looker tableau to to gain the data and make the Make, help them to make the decision on the business. So, oh, but of course, the, the best case possible, if you, you have the diverse team and you have both like software engineer, like SDEs in the team, and you have some less technical people and they, they can share the knowledge, they can, can help each other to progress their career and, and close the gaps. Yeah, and now we can look quickly on the different architect architectures. Yeah, let's start from very simple. So I used to build this one back in the time, AWS, simple like Redshift Data Warehouse for ETL tool, it, it was Matillion. So um, for BI, it was Tableau, so quite simple. And you you only need like a bit of uh, AWS, a bit of networking and SQL skills to, to make it working. So there is another one, uh, this is a bit, more complicated. Uh, it's involved Azure, Azure uh, analytic solution. It has a data warehouse part. It has data lake. It has streaming. It has Spark. So a bunch of the things uh, built on the Azure. So this is again like very typical Azure architecture. So moving next, this one it's uh, what was happened with uh, the project like on the first slide. So I've added there then Kinesis, the Elastic Map we used the Spark, the Data Lakes, HMaker, Afina. So based on the requirements. So it started a bit more complicated, but it's still like doable. Yeah, and this is a, then I just found Google, then I found, okay, with like data stack on uh, Google Cloud and quite similar to what we saw on the AWS and it's not very complicated. So then this is another project I used to work with the team. So we were provided feature store for amazon.com. So basically all the banners here. And the goal was to grab lots of data, like um, hundreds of gigabytes. No, it's not even gigabytes. I think it's terabytes of data that should be joined together and, and derive the features. The machine learning team can run their models on GPU instances. To, to calculate some kind of the features. So this is more complicated because it, it, it has more code in it. So I think I use uh, Scala for this. So this is another one project I did for the gaming industry. Yeah, it was also complicated, involved like different DevOps things and Azure Databricks, the Delta Lake, the streaming. So, but because Databricks was the managed service, so you don't need to think actually how you gonna like scale scale the platform and this is um another one that i found online like five tron airflow dbt so it's still like man manageable oh this i found 
complicated. So it's it's more like micro, microservices architecture. So I found this complicated, and because it's it's really highly like decoupled. You have microservice, the Kafka, and like then you have the streaming solutions in the Kafka and uh, different kinds of microservices. It's usually complicated and require like SDE knowledge. Uh, this is another one based on the open source I found like some clinical data analytics. So it, despite the fact this has like some some things that you wear like Airflow or Kibana, it, it probably also a complicated project. So as a summary, I think um, depends on the on the goal. So as a data engineer, um, you can always focus on the business value and desired outcome outcome and not do not mix with output because i know some some things that output and outcome is the same but it's not so outcome is some like tangible value for the organization there's output is like oh you know we built like five 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 plans and ten, ten dashboards we we proud of our work but if it has zero impact on the business then it's 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 not very helpful as a like you build one dashboard that help like decrease the cost by 5%. So in case if you see the people who has like less technical SDE skills, you you can offer the help on just a bit of mentorship them to to progress in their in their career. And I think it's good for everyone to learn the coding. It doesn't matter what you do in data space. The more coding you know, the, the more concept you know and like some fundamental things for computer science then better like. Uh, it calls like in some companies they call it grow mindset. So in the same time, depends on the hard uh, hardcore people if they don't like to talk about the business domains and they more about like solving really hard technical problems. So they they can think about okay how how we can better understand the business. And overall, there is no bad solutions or really, like bad implementations. Uh, and yeah, and I, I really like these things. And I think for example. I, di I didn't work a lot in CLI tool in the past. And I was thinking, oh, if people work in CLI, they're probably super smart. So now then I work in CLI tool and someone near, near, sit near me, myself and like, wow, they're looking like I'm a superhero because I'm doing CLI work. So you, you can invest some time in CLI. Yeah, I think that's it for me. So if anyone have, have the question, I'm happy to answer.